Hi, my name is Stinkta, and I'm here to talk to you about CRISPR's use in methylation of cancer-related genes. I chose this topic due to my extensive research and publication in this area. I'm a rising senior at Northwood High School in Irvine, California, with a deep interest in disease prevention and research, particularly in cancer and neurodegeneration. I published a paper on TGF beta's role in cancer with Dr. Max Zacker, and have two more being published one on CRISPR's role in cancer gene methylation under Dr. Nadia Nasruddin, and another on APOE4 in Alzheimer's with Dr. Alejandro Kernicer. I serve as a research director for Health Harmony and a board member for both Research Society and the Oncology Club. I've also contributed to a neuroscience course for middle schoolers, written articles for Health Harmony, published an environmental article with nonprofit interviews, and won an honorable mention in the Scholastic Art and Writing Competition for a poem. Currently, I'm working on a gel electrophoresis and protein purification lab at UCR with Professor Liao involving the sumo protein in cancer. So cancer is a disease where cells grow uncontrollably due to DNA mutations forming harmful tumors. In 2022, there are around 20 million new cancer cases and 9.7 million deaths globally. The World Health Organization projects 28.9 million new cases annually by 2040. This highlights the global burden of cancer, the lack of a definitive cure, and the limitations of current therapies, emphasizing the need for improved treatment from a global health perspective. Cancer progression can be understood through six hallmarks. First, tumors sustain proliferative signaling to boost growth. Second, they evade growth suppressors, bypassing immunity mechanisms like tumor suppressors. Third, cells that are cancerous resist apoptosis, avoiding the controlled cell death that removes harmful cells. Fourth, they enable replicative immortality, continuously replicating to form large tumors. Fifth, tumors induce angiogenesis, connecting to blood vessels, essentially stealing nutrients and oxygen from our body. Lastly, they activate they activate invasion and metastasis, traveling through blood systems to colonize other body parts. CRISPR is a gene editing tool prevalent in cancer therapy, particularly CRISPR-Cas9. It has three main components, a DNA repetitive sequence, the Cas9 protein, and guide RNA. The guide RNA matches the target DNA sequence with complementary bases and binds to it. Cas9 is an enzyme that cuts the DNA at the specific site. The DNA is then repaired through the cell's natural repair system or a DNA template, removing the area of interest and replacing it with the right DNA. So what if we could use this CRISPR technology for epigenetic modifications? Epigenetic changes alter gene expression without altering the DNA sequence. In my research, I focus on DNA methylation, where adding a methyl group silences genes and removing it activates them. In cancer, tumors use methylation to silence tumor suppressors and activate oncogenes, promoting tumor growth. CRISPR offers a way to modify gene expression by precisely adding or removing methyl groups, potentially reactivating tumor suppressors and silencing oncogenes. This approach is more efficient and reversible than traditional gene editing, offering promise for targeted cancer therapies. So I started to research ways this can be done most accurately, efficiently, and ethically. First, I use databases like Google Scholar and PubMed by entering keywords like DNA methylation, CRISPR, cancer, and gene regulation. I then outlined my paper based off my research, and I reviewed about 120 papers and about 60 were extracted and proved useful. For the purpose of this presentation, I won't go into detail about each paper I found like I did in the paper I published. Instead, I will summarize the findings. A majority of the papers discussed using DNMT3A as a fusion protein by fusing it with CRISPR. This technique was corroborated in many papers with DNMT3A specifically. However, a few studies mentioned other fusion proteins that could work like TET1 and CRAB. One study mentioned the possibility of CRISPR releasing epigenetic effectors at the target area, which will then methylate the area of interest. 
However, a few papers were inconclusive or provided negative results. For example, a paper using fusion protein sun tag wasn't able to methylate the area of interest due to off-target effects, which I will be explaining later. However, a majority of these papers ensured no actual change to the DNA sequence, only to gene expression, and was found successful. Many papers highlight fusion proteins for their efficiency, accuracy, and ability to allow specific epigenetic modifications. This technique shows promise for identifying and modifying cancer-related genes, though more trials are needed, especially for the promise in DNMT3A. Among the many benefits of the CRISPR-Cas9 system, CRISPR-Cas9's limitations include off-target effects, delivery method challenges, and ethical considerations. Off-target effects occur when CRISPR edits DNA very similar to, but not the actual target area. In regards to epigenetic modifications, this can cause harmful gene expression changes because methylation of DNA can completely stop or start a gene. The papers mitigated these effects by increasing target specificity using modified Cas9 systems. Furthermore, delivery method challenges hinder CRISPR's effectiveness because getting it into the cell is very difficult. Ethically, informed consent is crucial as patients should fully understand and control the treatment decisions. Ensuring CRISPR's accuracy to prevent harm is also vital. Emerging nanopore technology shows promise in overcoming off-target effects by monitoring epigenetic modifications live. Therefore, while CRISPR has been commonly used for gene editing, researchers should explore using CRISPR-Cas9 fusion proteins to efficiently and accurately regulate gene expression through DNA methylation. And this can be done for cancer-related genes. This promising area for future cancer therapy requires ongoing effort to mitigate off-target effects and enhance accuracy. Ethical conditions are crucial. In order to work towards a goal of cancer treatment, we must strive for precision while also exploring innovative options that might initially seem unconventional. Throughout my research, these are the sources I used, and this is my contact information. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you for listening. Mm.